This video describes how to add headers and footers to video psalm hymns. The footer information that we require includes the title of the hymn, the author, any copyright information associated with the hymn and the CCL church license number. By default, Video Song will add a footer to every verse in all the hymns in all the songbooks. In this respect, Video Psalm is the same as Easy Worship. However, a better approach would be to show the footer information only on the last verse. It is not needed after every verse. After all, we don't get that information printed at the bottom of every verse in the hymn books. Displaying the footer only on the last page of a hymn also gives a visual cue to the congregation that we are now at the end of the hymn. It could also be a useful cue to the protectionist. It would be nice to have a header at the start of the first verse giving the name of the songbook and the hymn number. Unfortunately, Video Psalm does not have an automatic menu option to turn on headers in the first verse of a hymn turn on footers in the last verse of a hymn and to have all other verses set without headers or footers. So we have to do it manually ourselves and that is the purpose of this video. Changing the headers and footers is done using another editing area in the Video Psalm desktop. This area needs to be revealed by first being in edit mode and then by selecting the text tab at the top of the screen and finally by selecting a small expansion icon in the corner of the style header box. Clicking on this icon opens the required area in Video Psalm which is known as the Style Explorer pane. You always need to stretch or compress the different panes in Video Psalm in order to give a convenient size to the Style Explorer. Footer fields are entered here. Any text typed into the header and footer fields will be displayed at the top or bottom of the verse during its projection. So for example, the songbook and hymn number or author and title of a hymn can be displayed. However, Video Psalm also provides the ability to add not just plain text, but a token, where the token is translated into text as it is displayed. So for example, instead of writing the author's name in plain text, you can add a token for the song author. A token is encapsulated between square brackets. The advantage of this is that the information entered into header and footer fields can always be the same, which makes it easy to add a header or footer. The token fields are translated into the correct plain text for each hymn. As we mentioned, the footer is turned on for every verse in the songbooks by default. But if you've already imported an agenda that was used in Thatcham and saved the updated songbooks and settings to your library, then that default setting will now be turned off so that no headers or footers are displayed anywhere. After creating a new agenda, we need to select the first verse of each hymn and add a header. We also need to select the last verse of each hymn and add a footer. Once we have made those changes to a particular hymn, we can save the settings for that hymn in your library. And if you need the same hymn again for a future service, it will already have the header and footer added. 
Styles such as headers and footers can be applied to individual verses or to every verse in a hymn or indeed to every verse in every hymn in every songbook. The level to which styles are applied are controlled by the style level setting. Checking the style level whenever we change a header or footer is very important to make sure we are not making changes to the whole hymn or to all the songbooks, etc. Now we turn our attention to the agenda we produced earlier. We select the first hymn in the agenda, which was hymn 362. We select the first verse in the slides area and notice the context of the style level has changed to verse. This means that any changes we make now in the Style Explorer pane will only apply to the selected verse in the selected hymn. We could pick individual fields to add to the header or footers from the Insert a Field option, but this would take too long. As a shortcut, we have the required text that should be inserted into these header and footer fields saved in a text file. All we have to do is to select the text and paste it into the correct area for the appropriate verses. There are two text files in the resources area of the Thatcher Methodist Church website. One for headers and one for footers. So visit the resources page in a web browser and download these two text files. Save them somewhere where you can easily find them again. Open each file and select all the characters in the file. Be careful to include all the spaces and full stops in the file. Paste the header text into the header fields for hymn 362. Select all the other hymns one at a time, pasting the same header text into the header fields. And make sure that the style level context is always verse. If it is ever anything other than verse, you need to change it back to verse before you paste the text. Now repeat the operation for the footer fields. Select the text from the downloaded footer text file and paste it into the last verse of each hymn, making sure that the style level context has not changed from verse. If it has, change it back again to verse before you paste the text. It sounds complicated, but it's quite easy when you have done it once or twice. Now check that the agenda is finally as we want it by running through a preview.
Save the agenda file and save the settings in your library. By saving the settings in your library, the changes you have made to the selected hymns are saved so that the headers and footers are already set up if we should choose them for a future service. The agenda file can now be taken to church on a memory stick and loaded into the church laptop.